My name is Tejo Gupta and I'm a sister to Ravi Gupta, who is one of the Kenyans who's been, who was detained illegally and now uh, imprisoned in South Sudan. 2015 was a very difficult year for us. On 29th of May, Ravi had traveled to Juba for some work and he happened to be at the premises of Click Technologies. The national security had come there to arrest John Agal while while he was being arrested, everybody else who was in that premises was arrested, which was my brother, four other Kenyans, some clients, etc. We were on the phone with him, so we were aware that somebody, something had happened. We waited for the weekend. On Monday, we tried to find out where they were taken in, but nobody would give us any answers. So after a week, we had our family members travel there to look around and ask questions about why and what happened. But they were instead threatened, and they had to come back. We reported this issue to Foreign Affairs. The first formal complaint was done on 18th of June 2015, where we told the ministry that something had happened to the Kenyans, but we were not aware of why and what. So they assured us that within a week or two, they would give us feedback and assure the family, mem and assure the family members that everything would be fine. So we had a back and forth with the Foreign Affairs for several occasions, whereas we, we, didn't, we didn't get anywhere with them. We then took this issue to the, to the media, and we got an official uh, meeting with the Director of Consular Affairs, Mr. Olo, for the first time to address the family members. He then explained that there was some investigation going on with the South Sudanese nationals and that Kenyans were part of this investigation. We allowed them to go through the due process and they will be released. So we kept having the back and forth. We had no concrete feedback about what was going on. We, had, we then engaged ourselves into a hunger strike protest outside foreign affairs sometime in September last year. And that is the first time the minister, Amina Mohammed, addressed the families. During this time, she assured the family members once again that she was using diplomatic channels to sort out our issues. She asked us to stay away from media as it was jeopardizing the case, and we did so as family members. And that's how the South Sudan 5 campaign then went quiet. We waited until February of 2016 when they were first presented to court. They all went through an unfair trial, whereas the lawyer was threatened at gunpoint and he dropped the case. We had cl uh, witness intimidation. We had the lawyer not being allowed to speak to his clients and how to, how to be able to defend them in court. We had several other occasions where there was an unfair trial. However, upon engaging with the foreign affairs here, they assured us because Kenyans had no mention in court, they would be released. Again, we had to allow South Sudan court process to go through their, their due process, and we agreed to do so. On 13th of June 2016 was the day where everything changed for us families because our, our family members were now sentenced to life imprisonment. We again appealed to the foreign affairs as to why this had taken course and they, they, they then came across saying that they were not aware and they would get back to family members. We went through a back and forth again. I've written several request letters to meet with the minister. I've written several request letters to meet with PS herself. I personally have been there every other week seeking for appointments, yet there's been no progress. We now appeal to the government of Kenya. They have acknowledged that these Kenyans are innocently convicted. We now appeal them to take a fourth step and be able to release these Kenyans and bring them back home. So we had, we had visited the parliament and we met with Honorable Aidan Dwale, who assured us that he would assist the family members. He then questioned the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as to why these Kenyans had not been brought back home. And our minister, CS Amina Mohammed, then responded to the question and assured them on the question that these, she acknowledges that these Kenyans have been wrongfully convicted and she's using diplomatic channels to sort this issue out. This was in 4th of July, 2016. Again, my numerous tries to the foreign affairs asking them on giving us feedbacks. We've, I personally have written several letters to request to meet with her, but there's been no feedback. Every, every meeting of mine has been an assurance that they're looking at it and they will sort it out. But as at the year end, there's been, no, there's been no movement from the government of Kenya. I would appeal to him on the grounds of what uh, our, um, our minister Amina Mohammed has written, that they're aware Kenyans are innocent and my appeal to him is they have suffered enough. One and a half years of torture in a war zone country is something that I can't even explain. I personally have visited them and I know that the conditions of their living is, is very bad. So my appeal to him is to bring these citizens back home. We're a very close-knit family. It is, I'm the eldest, he's, he follows me and then I have a younger brother. And five of us have always been very close. 
if anything, the only reason we allowed him to go there was thinking that we would seek greener pastures because of the, the business conditions in Nairobi were deteriorating. And that's why we approached this, this option that we had. We have never been separated for the longest time. If Ravi would always travel there and come back home. So he is, the longest he must have stayed there probably was a week or two, only because of business purposes. But otherwise, we've never been separated. So it's a very close-knit family, and this one and a half years has been a torture for us.